Brian, from looking at your IMDb, is it true that Steel City was your first feature? Or mm -hmm. okay. first feature. Wow. You had done a few shorts, I think. I did a uh, couple shorts in film school, and then I was put in this talent program called Fox Search Lab. Uh, me and a bunch of other directors, and they were cultivating young filmmakers. So they, I did a short under that banner in 2002. With them. And that's how I met John Hurd. Oh, okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well, then how did Steel City end up going to Sundance? Tell us about the story of just how it got in. I mean, so many people, that's their, that's what they shoot for. And yeah. Um, it doesn't happen. When I was making the film, I just wanted to, I, I mean, I knew it was going to, this is my first film, I was going to, it was either going to be, it was going to make or break me, that first movie. And... Um, I just did my best. As, as, as cliche as it sounds, I gave it everything I had. I mean, I used to lay in bed at night, and, and whatever your higher power or God is, I used to, I used to pray to God. I'd be, I would say, if, if I can't do anything else in my life, just let this happen. Let Steel City happen. I won't, just let this happen. Let me, give me, just give me an opportunity. Because I was, you know, working on the script, and I had John Hurd involved, and, um, you know, I was relying on the community of Alton. I had investors in Alton, and then I teamed up with a production company in LA. And it all came together in this very strange way that I've never had an experience like that since. And that was back when, you know, so it all came together. We shoot this movie. I get a great cast. Um, I'm, I'm in the middle of editing the film, and my appendix almost burst. And I'm editing, and I'm so into the, I'm so into editing this movie and, and um, I don't go to the hospital. And I wait and then um, I get violently ill. So I go to the hospital and I have to have my appendix, to, I have an appendectomy. And I'm like, oh man. And So then that happens in the middle of editing and then uh, finish editing the movie and I'm broke, I have no money. So I start working in a warehouse and uh, as a warehouse manager. And then that whole, I never really thought about Sundance that much. Because we submitted to Toronto a rough cut and we didn't get in, and um, you know the thing and the the voice in the back of your mind says, well, if, if Toronto didn't accept you, then Sundance may not accept you. But <clears throat> they were repping another movie. Uh, we had uh, not them. We were working with a company called Traction Media, who uh, was a, was a producer's rep, and they had a movie called Half Nelson, that they that was told they were in the very early on that Half Nelson was in. And uh, they uh, was repping. They were repping Steel City as well, and it worked out. They, I got a call that we were in. So you're you're working in this warehouse. You've already you edited the entire film. Movie's right. done at this point. The movie's done. Okay. Yeah, and um, and you were gonna pass on Sundance. You you thought, well, if we don't get into. Toronto. I mean, I, I mean, I knew. We, I mean, I would not pass. I mean, obviously, we. I was enthusiastic about going, but I. I um, you know, I'm working a nine to five job to pay my bills. I'm not gonna. I was proud of the movie, and and um, I did my my the, the production company submitted the film, so I didn't do any of the paperwork, and uh, I don't know. Where were you in your life when you heard? Did you get a phone call? Did you get an email? I got a phone call in the uh, uh, in the warehouse I was working in. Really? Yeah, saying, are you going to be around later? And I said, I get off work at 5. It takes me an hour to drive back home. And my producer said, well, they're going to call you. When's a good time to call you? I said, well, I didn't want them to call me at work. Um, so I said, after 6, I'll be home. So I get home, and it's the day before. It's like two days before Thanksgiving, or maybe the day before. I got a call from um, Caroline Labresco. And she said, would you, would you like to go to Sundance? And I said, to ski or for the film festival? And she goes, no, you're in, we want to include your movie. And it was great. So um, then we went and, and celebrated. So the job gives you time off? Um, no, I had to, the job let me go because I told them I need, to, I need all this time off to go to Sundance. And my boss said, what do you, what's Sundance? I said, it's kind of a thing for filmmakers. And he goes, OK. I mean, and that was it. So you had to quit? You, you had to give them... Yeah, I mean, there was, there was like a, it was like a mutual departure. Right. Wow. So you go, you come back, then what is... You, you come back to Alton after the fact? I, well, I was living in L.A. at the time. So I go back to Los Angeles and... Okay. Mm -hmm. Taking these meetings and reading scripts and playing the 
playing the game and um, I guess what everyone does after they go through an experience like that and uh, um, looking for my next project. And then one of your actors is given a nomination for what is it, Best Supporting Man Oh, Ray Berry got an Independent Spirit Award for Best Supporting Actor, which was fantastic. Um, because he's so great in the movie and you know when you make a low budget movie and you ask these actors who have been working since before you were born who have been done all this work you're so privileged for them to come do your little movie for no money I mean seriously it's a big deal when you have people that believe in you and they come they leave their home they leave their family they go to a location and they do your movie and when they get recognized for that on a big scale it's it makes it all worth it and they realize that and they see that. Because so many independent films that get made that don't get recognized, they're due recognition or they're bad, one or the other. Um, but I was fortunate that I got recognized and it was able to open that door that, yes, I can work with these people again. They trust me. So going back to that, those nights, you know, praying to God, whatever, did you expect that all this was going to happen? I mean, this is, this is pretty amazing for especially a first-time feature filmmaker. I know you had the experience with the script lab or, or mm -hmm. the, the contest, but I mean, was that the intention or you just really needed to get the story out there? Was that more of... I just needed some money to make my film. I was figuring out a way of who would give me an opportunity, a first-time director. I mean, I was young and um, I was figuring out how can I start my career? How can I... Um, what, what's it going to take for me to get the, uh, this opportunity, what am I going to have to do? And I just wouldn't give up. I mean, I was just, I was, when I was writing Steel City, I was working the graveyard shift in a hotel in Century City. And I was writing the script longhand on uh, hotel stationery. I'm seriously, I was writing all these dialogue scenes because I had to, all this time to kill. I, I wasn't allowed to have a computer. I couldn't write the script on the hotel's interface, obviously. So I wrote the whole first draft on hotel stationery. I mean, I had like um, 85. Um, hotel stationary sheets of just scenes and, and, and dialogue. Um, and I'll never forget that, staying up like in, in this, my hotel outfit writing Steel City. <laughs> it's kind of wild to think about.